Juicy Co-Creators, Lilu here on the Juicy Living Tour. It's not sunny today, but we are in San Diego, South California, with little drops of rain, but that's not going to stop us because we're absolutely passionate about this thing. Right. <laughs> Always passionate about everything, every moment. <laughs> really. Yes, you're best-selling author of, of The Passionate Test, is that right? The Passion Test. The passion. Mm, la la, French people, we love passion, as you know. I know you travel the world and inspire others to really live their passion. What an amazing, juicy life you have. Yeah, like yours, huh? <laughs> I'm impressed by what you're doing. I love your amazing, juicy life. I follow you. I love Thank your interviews. You. I'm sincere about that, too. <laughs> How do you um, create this extraordinary, juicy, passionate life? What are some of the, the principles that you teach? Well, the first principle is the formula for living a passionate life, which is simply intention, attention, no tension. Intention is getting clear on what it is you choose to create. And right now, which is really cool, is that the passion test is the number one tool being used all over the world to help people get clear on what they're most passionate about. So that's the first step, intention. Second step, attention. You know, everybody's powerful. Everyone. I, I've been to homeless shelters, and then I've given the passion test to people like Jack Canfield, at, who are at the top of their game, Brendan Burchard. And yet what I see all over the world is we're all powerful. It's just where are we putting our powerful attention? So the attention part is to direct your attention. In the passion test, we have you define what are your top five passions. And once you figure those out, then you take your consciousness, which is so powerful, and you laser it on what it is you choose to create in your life. And what most people do, Lilu, and I know you see this because you travel all over the world, is that many people who aren't happy and who aren't passionate are spending their time, you know, they wake up in the morning, they're listening to the news, they're, you know, driving to work, they're listening to the news, they're on their TV, they're talking to their friends about how bad the world is, and that's their day. And that's where their, you know, attention, their powerful consciousness goes. And people who are really happy and successful, and I say those two words, are happy and successful know to first get clear. What we say in the passion test is when you're clear, what you choose to have show up in your life, and only to the extent that you're clear, that clarity is power. Mm. So to clarify first, what are you passionate about? And then laser your attention, your consciousness, on what you choose to create. And then don't just sit there and go, okay, I got it, you know, oh, I'm a New York Times bestselling <laughs> author. Not, Don't do that, right? Because that's not going to do it. Gang, that won't do it. It's not enough. You have to take massive action, yeah. right? And take massive action, do everything you know, and then once you've done all that you know to do, and you've struck like lightning in all directions, I bet you've been there before, right? You've done it all. Okay, there's no more I can do. I've done it all, right? Mm -hmm. Then there has to be that place that point in your, in your life where you go, okay, I surrender. And that's the no tension part. I let go. I say this or something better. And in that surrendered state, now, I don't understand this. I'm not like Bruce Lipton. I'm not a massive scientist. But what I've seen is that you create a vacuum state where in that vacuum state there's that space to allow the people and the places and the things that you need in order to help you, support you in living your passionate life start to show up. And that's the formula. Intention, attention, no tension. And I really think that for the world, most people, they first don't get clear. And I'm so surprised as I travel all over the world. How many people don't even stop and step out of their busy life and say, what do I care about? Let's speak a bit on clarity because that is so precious, I feel. And, 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 and I have a question because f on the tour, I know that from the beginning, from years, years back, I always felt I want to inspire millions of people. But that was, you know, and that's the energy and I want to support and assist and, and do all those videos. Yet I don't have a specific plan and yet it's not that clear. I feel that the, the it, every step of the way, it's getting clearer and clearer and clearer. And I'm driven by this energy of transformation, of leadership, of of, of putting these out, but I don't know how it's going to show up. So is that clarity? Yeah, because you're clear on what your passion is. Yeah. Your passion is to travel all over the world in, in interviewing change makers, transformational leaders, right? People who are out there um, uplifting others to help them in their life, right? Yeah. Okay, are you clear on that? Oh, I'm fully clear on that. Well, you know, I love how you are because, you know, you're not the general manager of the universe and you realize that. Yeah. Now, you do know when you have a ticket to go to California to get on the plane, right? So you have some 
plan. Mm -hmm. I'm going to California. I'm getting on the plane. Mm -hmm. So there's your plan. I'm going to California. I'm getting on the plane. I'm coming to the Torrey Pines Lodge. I'm going to sit here in the garden and I'm going to interview a massive amount of transformational leaders. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's a good plan. Mm -hmm. You know, and how it's going to turn out, I'm sure you didn't plan that one, did you? I didn't plan this little meeting here. I didn't know that the Transformational Leadership Council was coming together here. It happened after my interview with Jack. So that was that's part of the yeah. bonuses all along. Well, that's the that's the staying open. You know, one of the secrets to living a passionate life is to stay open, to stay open to what's appearing now. Yeah. So I bet you were sitting there interviewing Jack, who I'm sure just loved you up and invited you to come here, right? Yeah. And um, and you were open enough, say, to change. I bet you were going to go somewhere else. Yeah. Is that not true? Yeah. But you were open enough to follow your passion. Your passion was, I want to interview a lot of transformational leaders, right? And there it was. And now you're sitting here. And how many interviews have you now done? Oh, I countless. <laughs> okay, there you have it. So you stayed open, and which is so beautiful, which mm -hmm. I can see you do all the time. And so once we gain clarity, even though if it's not specific, uh, because some people d do feel they have a passion for gardening, let's say, or some women have passion to take care of their children. All of that is also part of this. It doesn't need to be really, truly specific. It's just how, how specific does it need to get? Well, that's specific. I love to garden is very specific. You know, and it, what your passion is and what my passion is and what Bonnie Gray, John Gray's wife, perfect example you know, here's John Gray. His passions would be, I travel the world, you know, I teach people about health, I sell 5,000 million zillion books, right? <clears throat> I'm on TV shows. Bonnie's passions would be, I'm sure, you know, I, and, and I bet John's would have family in it, but Bonnie's number one, I bet, would be, you know, I love and adore my family and take care of them, and I spend massive amounts of time in my beautiful garden. And no passion is any greater than anyone else's. Yeah. You know, no passion is any greater. As a matter of fact, I always say, living a passionate life isn't personal. You know, none of us exist in isolation. We're all part and parcel of this unified field. And we all have within us, you know, this wonderful ability to give our gifts to the world. And your gift and my gift and Bonnie's gift and John's gifts, you know, that's not personal in the sense that when we are doing what we love, there's this beautiful saying in the Passion Test, what you love in God's will for you is one and the same. What you love in God's will for you is one and the same. And that means that God, the universe, the higher power, whatever name you want to put to that energy that is greater than yourself, when you align with that, you become aligned. And you're actually doing what it was that you were put here to do. And that's not personal. That's your way of participating in this cosmic universe and giving your gifts to the world. Isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. And that way, each and every one of us contribute. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's so important for all of us, especially at this time. It's so intense, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, you, you turn on the radio and you go, wow, I'm turning it off. You turn on TV, uh-uh, I don't want to watch this because it's, you know, the news does not uplift me. Mm -hmm. And it's such an important time for all of us to really live in our integrity. Living your passion is really living in your integrity and saying, you know, this is what I stand for. This is my time. My time is right now. And this is what I am here to do. And then, you know, I like to say, see the job, do the job, and stay out of the misery, mm. right? And don't, don't grip yourself onto that passion as you didn't, right? You have a passion, and then you let go. And you, you follow, you know, you follow the doors that open, and you live a life that's very graceful, I bet. Mm. And that's that's a true path of passion. It's beautiful. You, you speak of surrendering, and that's a big one. Is it the same than letting go? Same as letting go. Yeah, and it's not easy for most people because we want to control. We want to control the day. We want to control every, you know, what's happening in our lives. We want to control our relationships. And you notice that, and everyone can notice this, that when we're controlling, everything's going to hell, you know, and it's not working, and it's straining, and it's pushing, and it doesn't feel good within us. So to just recognize that, you know, you get clear on what you're passionate about, and then you say, this or something better. This or something better. Knowing that you're not the general manager of the universe, knowing that there might be a greater plan for you. As I'm sure you had a plan to do some interviews, 
and then Jack invited you, and then you changed your plan, and then you're sitting here. You know, staying open. It's, mm. it's a beautiful way to live. Yeah. When, I, when I hear surrendering, I always think of Oprah Winfrey that wanted so bad to, to do the color purple, you know, and that was at the, this fat farmer, she called it, and she had to really, truly release it, and, 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 and she received this call after singing this song, I should surrender all, huh? Because it's exactly that. Sometimes we want it so bad, it becomes an obsession, my God! Yeah, well, that's what most people do. It's like an obsession of, you know, you know what a hose is, right? And it's like, we want it so much that we squeeze squeeze it to death. And so no energy can move. And everything is energy. Everything is energy. And that's why it's to stay open and to just go, okay, you know, how do you know it's supposed to go this way? It's going this way. End of story. It's end of story. Mm -hmm. Loving what is. Loving every moment. And, and, you know, that's so trite. Loving every moment. Love what is. You know, mm -hmm. we've all heard that over and over and over again. And yet it's really the truth. That when you can really take a look at what's going on now and what's gone on in the past and really ask yourself, how has it served me? It'll always, it'll always, you'll always see the gift. You'll always see how it served you no matter what it is. So why not practice right now? Why not practice right now? Write down your list of passions and then live your life. Watch what doors open. The ones that don't open aren't supposed to open yet. They will. And if you want to hit a grand slam in your life, it's not enough just to live your passion. Mm -hmm. I wish it was. Mm -hmm. But it's your passion, your skills, your talents, the things you studied at, the things people compliment you on, and you take the things you've um, gone to school for. You know, no moment was wasted. No moment was wasted. Wherever you are right now is right where you're supposed to be. And everything you learned up until now is going to serve you in living your passionate life. And so to know that and bring all of those things in, that's the way you hit a grand slam and hit it out of the ballpark. How do we know when life calls us to take the next step and get to the next level? How do, what does it look like? <laughs> Because it's unbearable to go backwards. It's unbearable. You can't go any, you know, it's like, that's the door. I mean, sometimes it's painful, right? Mm -hmm. It's painful. And, you know, I, I love to dispel myths about living a passionate life because many people think that just because you live a passionate life, oh, no challenge. Once I know my passions, it's just like a smooth road, but it's not so. You know, there are obstacles, there are challenges, there are moments when you go, I don't know if I should go right or left. And yet what's so beautiful, and you will figure that out, what's so beautiful is that And you might figure it out by default, you know, Groundhog Day, doing it again, doing it again, doing it again, bonk, hit over the head, doing it again, right? And then what's so beautiful, though, is that when you really are following your passion, and I bet you've had this experience, is that even though you have challenges and obstacles, the love for what you're up to is so much greater than whatever is in your path. And so it's that love that will see you through. That love of what it is that you're most passionate about will see you through all the time and only 100% of the time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because what you love in God's will for you is one and the same. Mm -hmm. So what that means is, is that the universe doesn't play tricks. It's not a mistake that you love what you love. The, the path of passion is the path of least resistance. Mm -hmm. It's do less, accomplish more. And, and how do you do that? You stop. You step out of your busy life. You start to look at the different areas of your life that are important, your health, your career, your education, your spirituality, all of these things. And you begin with the sentence which we tell people to do in the passion test. When my life is ideal, I am. Mm. And then be like a child and don't censor yourself and start to write it down. What is it that you're most passionate about? And then through the passion test, we have a whole process to help you come up with your top five so that you're not you know, having 500 million things in your brain yeah. so you can clearly define what it is that you choose to create in your life. And then use a secret to living a passionate life, which is just simply whenever you're faced with a choice or a decision or an opportunity, choose in favor of your passion. Uh -huh. And that's it. And that's it. It's that simple. How, how do you define a magical life? Can Mine. we bring magic? <laughs> Can we really bring magic in our life? Is that, is that what we're talking about here? Yeah, I really, I really believe that when we really drop in to what is true for us, and we have the courage, because it takes great courage. You know, there's these surveys that are finding that 
uh, 20, 30 percent of working Americans wake up every day not happy and not fulfilled. And the re- w- reason why is because, you know, what do they do when they have a passion or something that they love and they want to do? Number one, if they can't think of how it's going to happen, they stop it, right? They don't even do it because the, the fear of failure, of not getting to do what it is you care most about, that's too much for many people, right? And the other thing is is that many people, when, when they were young, they had a dream, and they knew what it was that they wanted to do. And then someone came along and they said, who do you think you are? Mm. You're not rich enough, bright enough, beautiful enough, you're not the right color. And then they said, gosh, you're right. You know, what happened was they believed that to be true. So they're walking around with all these limiting beliefs of, of what they're capable of doing. So... What I say to people is, you know, stop and start anew and and put your Mickey Mouse ears on and have a childlike mind and ask yourself, if my life is ideal, I am. And then what would you be doing? Because, again, the universe won't play tricks with you. It won't. You won't. If you you know, if you're not really built for a being a football player, you're not going to des- desire to be a great football player. You're not. You know, or if you're, or maybe you're not, you're not making the team, but notice that, hey, what was it about being a football player that you really love, that really turned you on? I'm sure there's something that you can find that would put you in that world so that you could be living that passion of being in that football energy. What is it? Mm -hmm. And so what's magical is simply saying yes and having the courage and the integrity to do what you know to be right. Because what that does, and why that's really magical, is that creates such self-love, such deep self-love, to say, yes, I matter. This is what's important to me. You know, thank you and no. Mm. Thank you and no. And so many of us have people who, darn, I, I don't know about you, but man, I have my parents, my brother, my sister, my friends, they all knew what I should have been passionate about. It wasn't until I was 40 that I wrote the passion test, and there were 27,000 books on passion. And my agent, before she decided to take me on, and she's a top agent in the world, said, you know, I love your writing style. You're so enthusiastic. There's too many books written on this subject. And I was like, damn, she's right for a second, right? And then I went on a drunk. I ate a ton of potato chips. (laughs) frozen yogurt sat on the couch I was like oh and then I went no she's not you know no 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 they're not Janet Atwood no I no I have my own unique gifts no one's me you know which is so cool the universe is made up of a zillion individual people we're all unique we're totally unique so therefore no one can do you no one could do Lilu as well as Lilu could anyone do you as well as you could you do as, you know, I always ask people, could you do Martin Luther King as well as Martin? Mm-hmm. Or Gandhi? Or damn, Mother Teresa did a good job, didn't she? Yeah. You know, and no one can do Janet Atwood as well as Janet Atwood. And so magical is simply being you. Mm-hmm. That's magical. That's magical. Because in that world is massive joy because you are just so lined up that you are in that state of just instant play you know and everything's fun that is my world Mm. yeah and it's a juicy life it's a such a juicy life Lilu and it's great to be with you again (laughs) thank you so much Janet I really enjoyed this conversation and I'm sure we'll have many many more and I love your toes oh my god she's got little sparkle on her toes it's so cute I wish I had a camera to film all those little details thank you so much Janet this was very precious thank you love to you big big kisses to all juicy co-creators out there bye-bye